Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today, I don't know, you guys asked for story times. I have a couple, but they're all like really short. I'll probably do a lot of them on TikTok now. Because um, I always end up doing just like these weird mashups of a bunch of different similar themed story times. Um, which is kind of what this one is. It's a bit of a mashup between every time that I've done the London Marathon. Now, this is a very specific um, set of story times. You know, why don't I just do all my races it is because the london marathon has a very special place in my heart for having some of the best moments at least wheelchair racing wise like some of the best moments happen like way off camera um or not off camera a lot of things have been off camera but like a lot of the best moments happen outside of like all of that kind of thing like college and uh just when I'm trying to chill, you know, usually it's someone says something really funny, like today, right? Um, me and my dad were driving home uh, after college, right? And we were watching this YouTube video, or at least I was. Um, and they mentioned this software about GIMP. I don't exactly remember, but exactly synchronized. We both just allowed a small chuckle and went, <laughs> Gimp. And we spent like two minutes laughing about that for no reason whatsoever. It's not like it was just a random thing that happened. I thought I'd share it, but I've spent way too long talking about that, which is why I'm going to start talking about the London Marathons. Now, my first time like getting ready for that, I, I haven't done the full marathon yet, just to clarify. It's only been the, far, uh, the last five kilometers. Um, Obviously, wheelchair racing, not running it. But yeah, let's start off with the first time, like, getting ready to do it. This was a couple of weeks beforehand, and it was just a shopping trip. You know, we always do, or me and my mum used to do, like, these big shopping trips. Like, before every big road trip, um, or, like, massive days out and things. So we got like a bunch of snacks, um, like a bunch of drinks, uh, just a bunch of cool things to like entertain us on the drive and like keep us full for the drive. Um, you know, like if you live in England, I don't know if they do them like everywhere. They probably do. I don't know why I'm specif specifying it to England, but if you go in like a shop, they have the clear like boxes of different foods, such as like a box of like 20 brownies, mini brownies, and like, same with flapjacks and millionaire cakes. That kind of thing. We'd get like three of them, right, and mix them up. We'd buy one of each type. Uh, so we'd have like gingerbread men, um, millionaire shortbreads or flapjacks or brownies, you know, that kind of thing. And mix, not exactly even, but like roughly like a third each in each box and we'd have one box on the way there one box for on the way back and then another box we always ended up having one spare that we just eat throughout the week after that was always good um and that's something that i like kind of like about road trips is just like when you're getting all ready for it and you're like getting prepared getting in your blankets all right, every morning that we do this race, right, I would, because it, we'd have to be leaving at, like, four, five, six-ish, like, we'd have to be out the house by then, um, basically, I'd have, like, a bowl of porridge, it wasn't, like, a ceramic bowl, it was, like, a takeaway thing, uh, like, plastic bowl of uh, porridge, that was just... I don't know why, but porridge always hits differently when it's, like, cold in the morning and you're getting ready to go on, like, a massive road trip. Like, I've had porridge when it's been cold in the morning and it's nice, you know, always good. But when you're getting ready to do something and you're excited for that as well, that is when it hits best. So, again, I've been going on way too long about, like, even before getting into London. So, the drives up, we usually play a couple of games. Some good car games that we used to play were, like make the songs make sense it's kind of hard to explain but basically we'd have a playlist 
music playlist of a bunch of different songs. You can do it with like a Spotify playlist or anything like that. And we would have to like try and make the songs make sense. So for example, if it was I'm a Bee by Black Eyed Peas, right? If that was the song playing and the next song was going to be On a Highway to Hell, that kind of song, we'd have to like try and make a story out of that on the way up. We had some pretty funny moments where, you know, where someone would end up hanging on a cliff singing don't worry about a thing you know that kind of thing you know the usual stuff um but yeah we basically try and make the songs make sense and yeah it was kind of fun um and then also i spy which i am absolutely amazing at i'm sorry i'm just too good at it so we'd get to the race right we'd get into london get parked up um we'd park up like by the start of the race where the wheelchair races start um you know, get me and anyone else that I'm doing it with ready, uh, set up in the chairs. And then 10, 15 minutes before the race, sometimes half an hour, um, we were basically let out onto a small bit of road and just told to warm up, adjust our compensators if we needed to, make any small adjustments, like all professional shit, you know, like making it sound like we know what we're doing. Um, but yeah, basically we'd... Sort everything out, just make sure that we're all ready. And then we would, like, the last two minutes or so, we'd go up to the front where the start line is and then wait. They'd usually get a bunch of pictures and videos and all of that stuff um, for the news and things. And then the noise thing, not the gun, but it's like a honker, like canned air, uh, canned scream, um, basically they'd let some canned scream off and we'd go, um, and then the race is just something else. It's not exactly like a flat track. Also, right, I mentioned parking up, so the parents or like whoever you went with would park the car and then they'd have to drive it round in an escort, uh, to the finish line. But because of, like, traffic and the fact that it's a road and things, and, like, especially with the fact that it's the Bournemouth Ma uh, London Marathon, a lot of the roads are closed. So we usually finish, like, the races would finish before the cars got to the finish line, which was always really fun to feel. Like, I was kind of in a race against the cars. Um, I think the fastest I did it, and the fastest time... In the first time, even, right? So, I would average about 18, 17 minutes for a five kilometer race, but this time, right, for some reason, one time that I did the London Marathon, I think it was the last time, I did it in like 15 minutes, and that was amazing to me. I, I was really proud of that. Um, so, yeah, that was that, you know, we smashed it, did the race, and then because I had like done it so hard i could barely breathe after finishing the race um but they always give you like a medal when you cross the finish line it's like because we wear special gloves i've shown them in a couple of videos um but yeah basically the gloves hold our hands like that so we can't open our hands to like get the medal and put it on so they we have to like duck our heads down and they'll put the medal on us that's always kind of cool like a little personal medal ceremony um and then we'd go around a bit further to a setup, like a tent setup, and we'd be given a bag with some goodies, you know. It was just some water to help us not die. Um, quick re-energizing foods and stuff like that, just little mementos and like recovery things. Um, they're always quite nice goodie bags. And then uh, your parent or whatever will come over, collect you from the stand and then you'd go and do whatever you want now after the races you know after you have done this massive race and you're really proud and hyped up you just want to keep on going or at least i wanted to i was probably one of the only ones there that did but basically because you were like so full of adrenaline or at least i was i just wanted to keep on racing everything so i'd like be in my day chair right not even standing a chance against them but i'd be like trying to race cars and shit I don't know why. And then we'd always, like, go into, like, the Lego shop or other places like that, just 
have a day out in London. Um, I don't think I've ever seen like the actual London Marathon because I think it's going on at the same time, if not um, like a very similar time to the wheelchair races. So we don't really get to see any of it, but next time I do it, I might try and make a day of it and have a look round. Um, but yeah, basically that is my little talk. Jesus Christ, I went on. Um, but yeah, basically we'd spend the day up in London, um, finish whatever we were doing, go out, get some food. Um, I have a favourite burger place there. They do good milkshakes. Um, and then we'd go home um, with the snack bag and chill. By the time we'd get home though, it would still be pretty early, like three, four o'clock. Um, so we'd leave at six, do the race, spend the day up in London, and then come home before it was even the evening. Like, it would still be brighter than it is now. And then I'd spend the rest of the day either trying to recover or, you know, just chilling, having to calm myself down after the day. Um, and then go to bed. One time, right, I fell asleep on the toilet because I because I was so tired, you know, I went to bed at like eight or nine, but because I was up really early, didn't get much sleep the night before and then did a race, I just passed out. It was, it was funny. Um, but yeah, that is, that is it. Jesus Christ, I went on. It's dark. It's only five o'clock and it's dark. I'm not used to this shit. Um, but yeah, that is the end of today's video, guys. If you enjoyed, please leave a like, subscribe, all of that usual stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.